Bonjour, everyone. Hi, this is Nishi Lokatz. Welcome to Star Nation's organization's main fan page where I do this daily live stream or nearly every day. Um, <laughs> and so welcome. It is uh, Wednesday, April 10th. And um, yeah, here in northwestern Wisconsin in Toma, where I live, um, we have snow. Yes, it just started snowing probably about 10 minutes ago. Um, it's not, it's not like, you know, a really heavy, heavy snow, but it is snowing. It's more than, more than just a few flurries. And uh, yeah, so I'm not sure, but there's, you know, there's a lot of talk about um, this huge um, weather system that's moving through. And uh, north of us, they're, they're looking at about 15 inches of snow by the time this is all done. I have no idea what we're supposed to get. <laughs> I thought we were right on the edge, you know, between rain and rain and snow. But looking at it right now, we're definitely in snow. Yeah. So I guess we have to wait just a little bit longer for spring. <laughs> George. Um, <clears throat> let's see. You know, my my kid and my my video is kind of wonky, don't you think? It's a little. It's a little. Pixely. I don't know what that's about. I don't know. But anyway, welcome. Today, um, we're, we're doing the card draws from this particular deck. It's by Jamie Sams. Whoops, upside down. By Jamie Sams. Uh, it's a Sacred Path Cards. Um, we've been using this deck. This is the second time through with this deck. Um, we've. Uh, I started it uh, the first the first of April, and uh, yeah, you know, it's one of my favorite decks. Um, it was the very first one I bought way back when. Um, I think the copyright on that is uh, 1990. Yeah, and every morning I and I've been doing this for a really long time, drawing a divination card in the mornings just to see what the energy is like flowing that day. That's important for for me to know about, and so I just kind of adjusted it just a little bit. Um, to to include everybody you know is uh what is it that that's important for us to know about uh, the energy that's flowing today and um and how it affects our soul growth right and so it's for our highest good and highest good of all and so that's the intention just about every morning yeah so um i'm a little distracted because george george found a treat on the table here and so he, he's um, he was very good. He could have grabbed it off the table because it's a it's a, an, an end table, so it's right at his chin level. <laughs> he was very good at not taking it off the table. He's a good boy. Um, <clears throat> all right. So um, what I'm going to do before we get very far down the road here, I am going to like and um, share the live stream. Okay. And uh, you know my my usually my. Um, internet is really good here so i'm not sure what's going on i don't know if it's facebook i don't know if it's um be live tv app or what the deal is but um we're just going to keep moving forward i'm going to share it over to my news news feed just so my friends know that i'm live streaming and and of course, you know, asking them to please join us. There we go. There. Excellent. Doesn't take that long. Oh, see, now the video cleared up. <laughs> I don't know what that was about. Um, <clears throat> so this morning, this morning, it was a very interesting morning this morning. Um, so what I did was I did the card draw. Um, Drank my celery juice, uh, did a short meditation, and um, and then I sat down, and it was about 9.30 or so when I started uh, publishing the April edition of the Star Nation magazine. And it's more than just pressing the publish button. Uh, you know, it, it is that easy, actually, to do the actual publishing but <laughs> it's all the axillary stuff that goes around it that takes me about an hour and a half 
And so um, started at 9.30 and we finished up, oh, close to 11, I guess it was. And uh, recorded to 11, 10.30, something like that. Um, yeah, it was, hmm. you know, publishing day for me is a happy, happy day. It's a huge sense of accomplishment. And, um, and to know that um, all the articles that were submitted to that particular issue is, um, is getting into those souls' hands so that they can read the information that's meant for their soul growth, right? And, um, and so to me, for me, that's extremely happy. I'm, I'm doing the work that I'm meant to do with, through my soul contract and using my gifts and so it's, to me, it's a happy day, literally dancing in the kitchen happy. And uh, yeah, and, and just just to try to explain or uh, to describe the, fi- the feeling, it's like, it's like when you work on, when you work a nine to five and it's Friday afternoon, you know, and you're, you're close to getting off from work and the, the weekend starts, that is that feeling of yay, <laughs> can't wait, yeah. Yeah, it's very happy. It's a very happy feeling, and um, and in this particular issue, because of the the cover, our our community chose the cover. I had three different images that I would have been fine with with uh, uh, publishing any one of the three, and so I put it out there for a vote. And so our community actually chose the cover, and I got to tell you, you know, looking at it when it's all complete and the layout's done and. Um, and looking at it on my iPad, um, you guys did good. It looks fantastic. And I know I'm partial. It can't hardly not be. Um, but yeah, it looks really, really good. So I'm happy. I'm a happy camper today. Even though it's snowing out. <laughs> Even though it's snowing out. Let's see. Let's check to see who's all here. Yeah, scroll, scroll down. Uh, Stephanie's in the house. She's doing all kinds of, of um, posting for us. Thank you, Stephanie. Uh, put the link in there for um, the card deck and what it is and listing the shows that are coming up, the live stream shows. Good one. I like that. And, and, yeah, mm-hmm. there we go. And then there, there's the magazine. Thank you, Stephanie. Yeah. I thought I saw Rob's name in there somewhere, too. Did, did I, did I, I could have sworn I saw his name. Oh, see, you guys, I'm, you're kind of hidden a little bit here. There's, there's Tina. Hello, Tina. It's good to have you in the house. Hello. It's good to see you back. We missed you. I know you've been busy, you know, that's what happens, right? Life when, when you're doing your work too, right? And I could have sworn I saw Rob's name. There he is. I God, I saw him. It says, I'm setting up a mobile workstation out of the plant. Too loud to listen. Okay, catch us in the archive then, okay, Rob? It's good to stop, have you stop by and say hello. Yeah. Hey, and Kimberly Griffiths is here. Hello, Kimberly. Hello. Kimberly, can I ask you a question? Do you like being called your full name Kimberly or do you do you mind being called Kim? Because I, I have several friends who are, are Kimberly. That's their, their full name. And I would say out of the five, um, two of them really just want to be called Kimberly. Um, and the other two, there's Kim and there's Kimmy. Um, yeah, Kimberly. Because it's a very formal name, you know. And so um, it's like um, one of my girlfriends, one of my sisters, Teresa, um, her little boy. Um, I knew I knew William before William was born. And in fact, I knew her daughter, too, before they were born. And um, they named their little boy William. Right. And he doesn't doesn't use, they never used a nickname or a certain name for him. It's not Bill, it's not Billy, it's not Willie, it's not Will, it is William. And it's a very strong name, you know, there's some strength to it. And uh, and he is one of the coolest little boys I know. 
And uh, yeah, so I was just wondering. I was just wondering about that. Yeah. Kimberly, although my um, my school friends sometimes call me Kim, I see. Yeah. Well, sometimes, you know, our names, um, when, when we're adults, right, we have that choice. And um, it's like my youngest brother, um, his name is Robert. And so, um, you know, growing up, it was Bob, it was usually Bobby or Bob um, in high school. But when he hit like 18, 19 years old, something like that, maybe it was in his early 20s, he says, I, I want to be called Robert. My name is Robert. Call me Robert. And, you know, and to me that that made sense because he was stepping into being an adult, you know, and and being called Bobby when you're in your 20s, you know, it gives it sort of a, a different kind of impression than than what he wanted. So I totally get that. I totally get that. So how about we, we uh, do the cards? We have two of them today. Okay, here we go. Um, <clears throat> so it's kind of interesting. Um, I'm, I was standing in, in our four season porch, which in Wisconsin, it's really only like a two and a half season porch because um, it gets cold. And I was shuffling and asking for the card, you know, the information. And, and these two cards jumped out nearly at the same time, and I and I had to had to get uh, um, a little bit more of a question. It's like, okay, so which was the first card, right? Because they, they, literally, I couldn't tell. They both jumped out at the same time, and so this is the one that came first. And I like this card because I like the little girl on there. It's called the giveaway ceremony. The giveaway ceremony, and it's all about release. Don't you just love that little girl? I like her moccasins. They're kind of like boots. Yeah, get ribbon down at the helm, and it looks like a, um, a belt, maybe a silver belt. Yeah, and she's carrying the horn of plenty, the cornucopia. Yeah. This is this is one of my favorite cards in this deck. I guess kind of I can kind of be, um, I know what it's like to be that little girl dressed like that or similar to that. <laughs> and actually, my inner child, that part of me, that aspect of me, um, I see her uh, still dressed in that um, had a favorite outfit because you know I, I started dancing. Native American dancing uh, professionally at the age of five. And uh, my mom would make us these outfits, my youngest brother and I. And one of the outfits that I really, really liked to wear uh, was a cotton dress. And it, it was um, had a little bit of a flounce to it, you know, and it was kind of a, um, I want to say it was green, kind of a yellow green. And it was a two-piece. It, it had the top and, and uh yeah, and that was my favorite outfit. Why? Because it was easy to wear, and I could run around in it. Um, there were times when I had to wear our, my buckskin dress. I had two of them, and you, you couldn't run around in those. It was one; they were they're hot because <laughs> this is summertime. Um, and one of them was white, and you had to really be careful where you sat and where you stood because otherwise, mom would end up having to clean it all the time, right? And um, and how do you keep a little kid like that still? and not, not get dirty, right, with a white buckskin dress. Um, it's one I wore, I used to wear during, um, for like parades and that kind of thing. And the other one was a brown one. That one was a little bit easier to wear because the dirt didn't show up that, as much. And so I didn't have to be like, you know, totally, you know, staying away from certain things and that kind of stuff. And um, So when I see my, when I'm with my inner child, um, that is the outfit that we're wearing is the fun one. The one that uh, it was just plain cotton. There wasn't, you know, wasn't wasn't very fancy at all, and uh, yeah, so we could run around. Mm -hmm. All right, here is here is the poem that Jamie Sams, the author, writes for the giveaway ceremony. She says, "Aho, child of Earth, do you know the secret of the giveaway? 
The more you release, the more you receive, for that's its nature's way. A whole child of earth, do you believe in reaping what you sow? A drop of wisdom will bring the truth and you will truly know. So in, in that giveaway, um, in that ceremony, it really is a balance of giving and receiving. And um, to be a part of a ceremony like that, not only that, it's fun. It really is fun. Most times um, I've only experienced giveaways during like powwows or during naming ceremonies. Um, so the the host family, the host family, um, they they collect gifts from the, all the clan members give something, you know, and um, yeah. And when there's a big giveaway, like at a powwow, um, th there's a lot of little things, you know, like brooches and um, little things. It's not very a lot of very large expensive gifts, but a lot of little things. That's in modern day. That's in modern day. And they usually bring it out in, uh, uh, tied up in a blanket. And um, depending on how big the powwow is and what the giveaway is for, there could be like four of those big blankets all tied up and all the gifts are inside. And um, a lot of times the, the younger people like, you know, teenage, like maybe 15, 16, all the way up to maybe 22 or 23, they're the runners. Um, they'll, they'll pick up a, a few things from the blankets and they'll go out into the, um, into the audience and um, what they're doing is they're looking for the elders, the people who would make it would it be difficult for them to get down into the dance ring to go pick up a gift. And uh, once that's done, then um, it's the children that get to go out and uh, and, and pick up something from from the, the blankets. And, and uh, so eventually everybody has a little something. Right. And then the uh, the lead drum, the lead drum usually does a, uh, a thank you song. So it's and everybody who has a gift, which means it's everybody who can dance. They get out into the dance ring and uh, you dance the thank you dance. It's a great gratitude dance. Yeah. It's fun time. Really, it is. If you haven't ever experienced that, I wish we could do it, do it together. I wish we could go to a powwow and have you experience it because I tell you what, your inner child is all, oh, yeah, this is so much fun. And there's there's this part and the um, they're called the honor beats, right? And um, that you raise the, the gift that you received up and 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 you're it's literally you're, you're giving thanks for it. And uh, so that is in modern day, the way that I've experienced it, right? Um, our ancestors, um, when they would do a giveaway ceremony, um, sometimes they, uh, in the book, uh, she talks about the pot, the potluck or the potlatch, um, so that you're bringing not just the gifts, but you're also bringing food, right? And it's a gathering of the people, and it's, um, it's the giving. The, the intention is usually around, you know, some something that's being um, a ceremony that's being done. For us, it would be like somebody receiving an eagle feather, or receiving maybe a child's being named, giving the, being given their spirit name or their Indian name. Um, and so the family, um, they they do giveaways, right? They um, sometimes it is that blanket that gets given. Um, and sometimes it is a, a little bit more, it, we're giving our best is basically what it is. It's not how much you can afford to give mo monetarily. It is giving your best. And so sometimes the, your, your best is, is something that um, maybe you made, right? And, uh, and so it's that, that balance of giving and receiving because the, the belief behind it is that you're giving something that is precious to you that um, yeah that you're connected to right and so when you give it away with a good heart meaning you're not expecting anything in return you're not even expecting a thank you okay it's just you're you're, you're giving it from your heart and um, and knowing that the that the other person will benefit from it okay that that's the intention of the giveaway. And really it is, you know, 
looking deeper into it, it is um, teaching about not being um, connected to the physical items, <clears throat> right? Yeah. And that that's in, how do we want to say that? That's in the perfect world, I guess. Because even though that's the teaching, that doesn't mean that um, everybody listens to the teaching. <laughs> yeah, us two-leggeds, right? Okay. <laughs> I'm looking in the chat to make sure I didn't miss anybody. Hey, uh, Julie's here. Hello, Julie Shumway Hill. Good to have you here. Tina says, to me, the card meant our inner child needs to really struggles in the life of healing, basically. Well, it could be. It could be. It could very well be. Because it is about releasing. Yeah. And, and actually, you know, what she's holding up there is one is her doll, really. Take a look at that. Oh, Got to get the camera to focus. She's giving up one of her own possessions, right? Yeah. Having a good heart to do it. So Jamie, Jamie Sams, what she says is that, um, she said, in this ritual, giving away of useful or loved possessions is a form of sharing with others. It's also a sign that the giver is willing to make a sacrifice and surrender a gift to another person without attachment or regret. Um, the understanding of sacrifice originally meant to make sacred. To make an act or any gift sacred, one has to complete that action with a joyful heart and a humble attitude. Yeah. So, you know, to, to give something um, and not expecting a person to use it the way that you think it should be used or um, having that control issue with it, you know, um, some people, you know, they they try to buy you with it. Right. And so um, and that's a control thing. And so and this giving has nothing to do with that. It's all about giving it from your heart and being happy and happy for the person that you're that's receiving the gift, right? So Jamie Sams also says, no one is ever abandoned, orphaned, or left without food, dwelling, or help. The purpose of the giveaway is sharing. The lessons connected to the ceremony teach the people how to release possessions and to let go of the ideas of importance connected to those belongings. The more prized the possession and the greater sense of ownership, the more the more potent the lesson. If one cannot give without strings attached, there is no true release and the sad and the sacredness of giving without expectations has been destroyed. Yeah. Oh my God, is it snowing really hard out there now? <laughs> um, and so I don't know, you know, um, and I know that we, we all come from different cultures, different, different belief systems, you know. Um, when we take a look at gift giving, you know, we know what it's like to give. And this is also about learning about how to receive too, right? Is that if somebody is giving you their prized possession, in our, in, in our world, in my world, um, you you wouldn't you wouldn't say oh no please, no I can't take that you, you wouldn't give it back to them that would be so disrespectful and dishonoring of that you know and and the the best way to be able to receive it is to take it and um, be joyful about it right and um, and be thankful for it yes yes gratitude in a humble way right. Because they just they just shared something with you that um, is a part of their part of their heart, right? And it also teaches us not to be attached to the material world, really. Yeah, I, I think that's probably a hard thing to do, don't you think? That there's certain things in our lives that I know the last thing that I gave. 
and to someone with a, a shawl that my mom made me. Um, and the way that my mom makes the shawls is kind of in the old way. It's a, uh, it, it cuts the the fringe to a certain length, and then you know, um, does the knot tying and all of that. Yeah. Yeah. And it was like, oh man, you know, that was the last one that she made. And I had to sit with it for a little while and I thought, okay, so what's my intention with this? Because if I can't do it with a good heart, then I shouldn't do it at all. And so I slept on it overnight and the next morning I woke up and felt like, yeah, I can do this because I really care about this other person. And this other person um, didn't know her birth mom. Uh, had been given up for adoption, you know, and actually was returned at least once. And so, you know, having something from a mom kind of thing. And so I could, I could do it. I could do it with a good, in a good way, with a good heart. Yeah. That's a good one. Um, and I've also given Pendleton's, Pendleton blankets, um, um, without any, any strings attached to them, you know, because somebody in our, in our tradition, you know, to give that kind of blanket means that, you know, that they gave of themselves. And so you're honoring them. Right. Um, in other traditions, you might, you might receive a, a, a quilt, a quilted blanket. Um, and so the, it teaches us to be able to give without attachments to it. And it also teaches us not to be attached to um, material things. Right. Yeah. And so my mom always tells us, says, you know, when you're going to give something, give, give, give it your best. Don't give something that is used and worn out. What are they going to do with it? Right. But to give your best for it. All right. So keeping that in mind, um, Jamie Sams goes on to say that uh, in releasing possessions, we dearly uh, we love dearly. We're able to open our lives for future abundance. So when we give something, we're freeing uh, energetically. We're freeing up that space um, for something else to come in for us, right? And um, she also says that in um, <laughs> got to back up. Ancestors say that it will that if an uh, object is carelessly uh, broken by a human, the spirit of the object has been killed. So when if we don't take care of the gift that was given to us, um, we're being disrespectful to the person who made it and also to the person who gave it to us, right? And so when we're given something is to actually um, don't treat it like clutter, right? Because, you know, the definition of, of clutter is something that you don't love and that you don't use. And so if you receive a gift um, is to actually use it and enjoy using it. Yeah. Now I've been given Pendleton blankets too. I've got, I, I don't know, several. And, um, and so in my guest bedroom, they're, they're on the beds. And so when we, when we have friends over and they're staying overnight, they get to use those nice warm wool blankets. Um, yeah. And so to be able to, to share them in that way um, feels good. And so I'm also using the gift, right? Yeah. Um, Okay, so everyone acknowledges the gifts, um, great mystery gives through the field of plenty, as well as the purpose of not accumulating more than one can personally use. The teachings of the giveaway are basic to native understanding. Many other lessons are learned each time one has the opportunity to share and is faced with personal feelings that arise when the decision to give away is made. As um, we free ourselves from the need to give with strings attached, or the regret that sometimes follows, we're able to release our spi um, spirits and allow them to soar beyond the limited and understand limited understanding of our former selves. Now, I'm going to go back to Tina's comment here about um, the meaning of our inner child needing to release struggles in life or uh, for healing, basically. Okay, so when we make the decision and we're, we want to give something, right? And we're, we're going to give something that is um, precious to us. 
it, we should take some time to consider it and letting in releasing it and letting it go right so it could be a metaphor it could be a metaphor so if we're releasing or giving something that's precious to us um even though even if it could be maybe it's a a, a belief that you learned from your parents, from your grandparents, right? But you find that it doesn't quite serve you. It doesn't quite support you. And it helped you during, for a certain time in your life, but as an adult, it no longer supports you. So how can you give that away with a good heart to release it, to release it? Yeah, it's not it's not that that you have to do it with with anger or that you have to do it with um, sadness or anything like that is that when you do the releasing of it, it's making room for something that can come in um, that will support you. So you can be thankful for everything that it's done for you up to that point, up to that point. And then it's in the release that we actually have that healing in that soul, that uh, soul growth. The healing and the soul growth. And so you could say that it, there, there's a balance there of giving and receiving. Letting something go, right? Um, Jamie goes on to say that the, the giveaway card spells relief with release. <laughs> Don't get stuck holding on to things that no longer serve you. Associates, ideas, habits, belongings may need to go at this time. Attachment to attitudes like needing to be needed or like liked may no longer serve either. You're being asked to share what you can, give away something that can help someone else, or just let go. Don't hold on so tight. The natural flow of life is squelched when you, when you insist on control, total control. In all cases, the giveaway card tells us to release any bond that makes us makes us captives of our own creation. And in so doing, we can spread our wings and fly. Remember that generosity is a talent and a virtue that comes from dropping the fear of scarcity and from trusting the great mystery. Yeah, trusting that the universe will provide. Right? Um, and, you know, and that's something that Paul and I have always, um, from the time we decided to get married, um, though, back in those days, man, if we had a quarter left over <laughs> after paying bills and buying a little groceries, we were happy, um, you know, those early days of marriage. Yeah, but we also believed that we would always be provided for, as long as we did our part, that... Uh, the creator, the universe would always provide for us. And that has always been true. Now that is a belief that we have, right? Um, even though my parents, um, my mom was born, lived through, they both did, um, the Great Depression. They were both children at the time. They remember it. And they also learned a lot of things from that, that uh, they passed down to us. And that was, you know, um, that you hold on to what you have because you never know when when the bottom's going to fall out and you're going to need it, right? Um, those kinds of things. So there, there is this this feeling of scarcity. Now that's what they grew up with, and so that's what they passed down. And so um, have having the opportunity to recognize that and to release that. And Tina, that's that's kind of what you were saying, you know, is that that inner child um, releasing that feeling of, of never never having enough or just struggling just to make ends meet, you know? Um, yeah, rather than being grateful for, for the things that were already provided, right? Because we've always had um, a place to live, um, usually a decent place, We've always had food on the table, enough to share with others. We've always had that. 
even when we only had a quarter left over. Why is because Paul's a hunter. We both were at the time. Um, and so, you know, we, we always had meat in the freezer. We always had venison there. We were always able to donate um, venison to um, someone's ghost meals. Somebody, somebody walked on, right? And so we were always able to, to, to give something to the meals um, for those relatives that had walked on. So it's all, it's kind of, I like this card because it stops you and kind of makes you think a little bit about how do I give? Do I give with strings attached? Do I give from my heart um, and not expect anything back? Yeah, it makes us think a little bit, doesn't it? Now, I have to say, hi, Valerie. Good. I'm glad you're here. Um, I have to say that that was something I had to learn, right? Especially with my nieces and nephews. Yeah. As they got older, right, in their 20s, 30s, 40s, um, yeah, not treating them like children anymore. Um, and as they got older, expecting more from them. And so if I gave something, I expected something, right? And I had to, one day I just had to stop and think, ah, that doesn't feel good. Why doesn't that feel good? and realized that I had strings attached to it. Mm -hmm. Yep. So um, the next time, especially when it came to money, and the next time that you know somebody asked for a loan, it wasn't a loan, it was a gift. And to be, um, to sit down and talk to them about that, right? Yeah. So we all learned something from that. You know, um, sometimes it's not simple. It's not easy um, because we're attached to certain things or we want certain things in return. But when, when you have this belief of the, the giveaway card, of the giveaway, then, you know, we have, to, we have to really take a look at how is it that we're, when we're giving, whether it's an actual gift or maybe you're using your your spiritual gifts. If you're a healer, right? How are you sharing your gift? So it helps us to stop and really evaluate for ourselves, and also to look on the other the the, the other side of it. If you're if you're giving, right? There, that's that's one part of the equation. The other part is a receiver. How do we receive? How do we receive? Do we receive with gratitude and an open heart? You know? Yeah. Helps us to stop and kind of consider that a bit. Get, in other words, we're getting to know ourselves much better, right? And also, it helps us to kind of sift through our, our belief systems and see what we want to keep and what we want to release. I think it's a good thing. Yeah. So there's that one. Um, that's the giveaway. The second card that came, and I thought, oh, this is just so perfect. It really is. This is the second card that came. And, oops, and that is the field of plenty. The field of plenty. And it's about, let me get my camera to focus here. Ideas, needs manifested. And it's that cornucopia. Field of plenty. The field of plenty. Here's the poem. Field of plenty, abundance for all. No hunger, no more pain. Great mystery holds earth children's dear and feeds them with eternal flame. Children of earth, trust again. Be grateful and give praise. 
the field of plenty will remain, sustain us, all of us, all our days. Hmm. So the field of plenty. Now, here's one way to look at it. And I'm sure that many of you have said this or done this. Okay. And that is, you say, you say something like, you know, I would like such and such to happen. I'm going to send it out to the universe and, and, and see what happens to create it. Right. You're sending it out there. You're sending it out to the field of plenty. It's where our thoughts go for the creation to happen. And from a sacred sacred geometry point of view, perspective, that would be the sixth dimension where the platonic solids lie because they're the building blocks for all creation. And so, you know, the field of plenty is the same thing. Um, that's where our, our um, desires, our wants, that we want to manifest in, in the physical world. That's where they go to get created. And then it comes that the energy comes back to us um, for us to ground to the earth plane. Mm -hmm. So really, you know, when you think about the, these two cards that came, they're really about the balance of giving and receiving. Because I'm going to show them to you here. All right. So here are the two cards together, right? The giveaway ceremony, it's about releasing. And the field of plenty is about manifesting. So when, when we do the giveaway and we have a good heart and the things that we're giving, we, we're not attached to. There's no regret in, in doing the gifting, the sharing. Whether it's something um, material, physical, or whether it is um, using our gifts. That we make room for the universe to provide even more. Yeah, and it also goes along with that same, you know, like when, for instance, if you're looking for a new place, right? Uh, you want to move to a bigger place, maybe, you know, your family's grown and or the opposite. Your, your family has gotten smaller and um, you want to downsize. You want to right size and get to a smaller place, right? You don't need the four bedroom home anymore. Um, maybe a two bedroom is more, more your speed now, right? And so um, you would like this to happen. And so you're going to make your desire known. You're going to send it out there into the universe to please find, help me find a place that I can afford that's really nice. It's in a good neighborhood, right? And um, it's maybe um, a ranch style rather than having steps like in a, um, a split ranch or something like that, you know? And so you're really letting, letting um, the universe know what, you, what you're looking for. So when, when we do that, we're also preparing that fertile ground for that creation to, to occur. Yeah. And so when, when we have released something, we're, we're creating space, energetic space for that next thing to come in. And when we do that, a lot of times, many of us, what we say, or something better or something better because in our two legged mental mind, um, we may not allow ourselves to think or to have those, those thoughts about unlimited, right? Or something better. So it's allowing, that's allowing the universe, the creator to, to be able to bring to us something that we couldn't even imagine. And it's so much better than what we could have imagined, right? That's the, that is the field of plenty and how these two work together. So when you're releasing, you're making room for the next thing that's coming in and it's coming through the, the field of plenty.
Kind of nice, huh? I think so. All right. So, um, you know, Jamie Sams, um, her background is from the Seneca. And so the Seneca are out on the East Coast, right? And the Seneca are part of the Haudenosaunee, which is um, the um, Iroquois Nation. That's the Confederacy. And um, and so she, what she brings to us is their, their um, belief around the field of plenty. She says the field of plenty is an Iroquois teaching that has to do with the understanding of creation. When great mystery created our world, everything that would ever exist was re was created as ideas in the thought or spirit world. Thought forms that provide all that is ever needed on the good red road of physical life exists in external readiness inside the field of plenty. To call these ideas into manifestation, one need only co come to great mystery with a grateful heart which will bring the needed ideas into the physical reality. The field of plenty is seen as a spiral that has its smallest revolution out in, t in space and its largest revolution near the earth. The field of plenty by bringing the cornucopia baskets full of vegetables, the Iroquois women wove these baskets as a physical reminder of what the great mystery provides. So whenever you see that cornucopia, now you're going to know. You know why. It represents the field of plenty. So um, the smaller end of the cornucopia basket is, is um, out into the field of plenty. There's sixth dimension. And the larger end is facing the earth. And so it's bringing us to us those things that we have requested. That we had, that our thoughts went out there for. Hmm. Yeah, and she is talking about um, that there's, um, let's see, wait, I got to back up just a little bit. When the Native Americans are in need of some tool or the services of a skilled person, they give thanks to the field of plenty for the manifestation of the needed item before it actually appears. The field of plenty always has ways of putting the, the needed item into the hands of the person who needs it. The keys to manifesting what is needed are gratitude and trust balanced with action. There's no need for scarcity. Abundance for all the children of earth is manifesting. Thought um, always precedes form. Thought always precedes form. If ideas of sharing and equality precede that reality in the hearts of the two-leggeds, the manifestation of the physical needs being met will follow. This is the great mystery's promise in creating the field of plenty. Right. So whatever we need for our soul growth, whatever we need to be able to um, complete our soul contract, will be provided. It will be provided. And we have to have faith in that, right? A belief, um, a strong belief would be helpful, um, that, that what we need will be there when we need it, in the time that we need it. So it's that divine timing. Not necessarily in um, the two-legged timing, <laughs> which also then, you know, stretches us, right? Yeah, having to wait. Hmm. So, um, so our needs will be met. So we should show great mystery, the trust that we have in the process, dropping our doubt and becoming childlike again. Do not limit the manner in which the physical manifestation occurs. Original source operates in mysterious ways, placing the perfect people, places and things in our paths to be answered uh, to the answers to our true needs. We are asked to recall the difference between true needs and material crutches, which are more illusions of happiness. In all instances, the field of plenty reminds us of our divine right to have our prayers answered and our needs met. The, horn of, the field of plenty. So we can kind of see how these two, two cards go together, right? 
in what we're we're giving, what we're releasing, making room for the next thing that that's being created for us. So what are we what are you releasing? What are you in the process of doing right now in releasing? You know, some of us are doing spring cleaning. Not to, not to see it outside with all, it's pretty snowing really hard. Um, yeah, could be spring cleaning. And you're going through your closets. You're going through, you know, what you want to keep, what you want to give away, what you want to offer to friends. Yeah. And others, others, maybe you're, you're, you are doing that work with um, looking at your belief systems, even just one of them, right? Just to see um, what is, what is serving you, what, what's supporting you and what isn't and releasing what isn't. Maybe it's that. Or perhaps it's what Tina was referring to is that releasing our struggles, releasing our struggles, letting go of what it is that we're struggling with, right? We talked about that yesterday, didn't we? Yeah. Is that when, when we're, we're putting up that resistance to um, that change, the changing of our life, um, when we resist it, that shift that goes on um, is when we create more challenges for ourselves. Yeah, we're not in the flow. And in order to get into the flow of the energy of the of the shift, um, sometimes we have to let go of some things in order to do that. And so this this has something to do with it too. Right. So the question is, is that acknowledging what what you're, you're in the process of releasing. Because you can do it with a good heart. You can do it in a good way, they say. Um, so it is from your heart. There's no strings attached. There's only gratitude and happiness, joyfulness in that release. Yeah. And that way you're creating the the vibration for the next thing to come into your life from the field of plenty. So you can see, you can sense there's this balance of giving and receiving. Um, when we're in balance with it we're, it, we're always provided for, always. Yeah. So that's a good question to, to you, our audience, our listeners. What are you in the process of releasing, of giving away, letting it go? And once you acknowledge that, sometimes it's easier to get into that flow of that shifting energy and change. And it prepares you to be in um, a higher vibration to receive what the universe is bringing to you through the, the field of plenty. Uh, I think it's a good one. Hmm. Gonna have to look to see. When am I when am I releasing? Right? What am I releasing? It's a good question. So remember, anything and everything that you heard here today, if it resonated with you, if it felt good to you, my suggestion is to embrace it. And then to sense, feel, see how the energy is unfolding around you. And um, and where this is, where you're directly involved, or maybe you're bearing witness to it, right? Yeah. And if it didn't resonate, don't worry about it. It's okay. You're not going to hurt anyone's feelings, especially mine. You're not going to do that by saying it didn't. That didn't resonate with me. That's okay. It's all right. There's always tomorrow, right? Um, yeah. So today's Wednesday. <laughs> and tonight that means that it is soul connections with Polly Jola Bay. 
you know, if you're if you're uh, ready to release something and um, you need uh, energetic help to do that, tonight would be a good thing to do. Come to the healing meditation and bring your intention and your spiritual team with you. And um, it's the, the tonight it can be very powerful healings because a bunch of us are together working on our own stuff. And Polly Jo and her team are holding that sacred space for us and helping us release. Um, yeah, so if you're going through that, you might want to join us tonight. And then the second half is all about the, the card draw, right? So if you'd like to have a mini reading with Polly Jo, you can always ask for a card in the second half. All right, so let's see what else is going on. Tomorrow, uh, Thursday, is... Um, the Ed, uh, Life Wisdom with Ed Langdon show. Hmm. And he is going to be, he's talking about emotions. Why we have them. Which ones do we want to keep? Which ones do we want to release? You know, there's that releasing again. <laughs> and if that's, that, that's something that you want to work on, um, Ed is going to be doing some tapping around releasing certain kinds of emotions. And so it might be really helpful for your soul growth and what you're healing, right? But he's also opening it up in the second half of the show where um, he'll do some channeling with his spirit guides, some of the ascended masters, and um, answering your questions, right? So if you want a specific answer about something, ask a specific question, and, uh, and an answer will be provided to you. Yeah. You can ask that question right there in the live chat, or you can send Ed a message through Facebook Messenger or using the link um, in, you know, what I, we, I can never remember what it's called. We'll put it in, in the in, in the chat com, uh, comments. You guys have that. Um, if you want to send your, your question to Ed um, today, so he has time to take a look at it because um, I'm sure he's getting probably a few of them today. All right. All right, so Julie Shumway Hill is saying, uh, doing some spring cleaning and also examining some beliefs. Yeah, making room, right? Making room for the new to come in. I'll be there needing healing. Now, I'm there too, you know, I'm producing. So I'll be there too. Um, in fact, I'll probably be producing from um, home the way it looks outside. I don't know if I'll want to come back out later this evening to do that. So um, I'll be in my meditation room <laughs> producing. Um, <clears throat> what else? If you're interested in the April edition, April issue of Star Nations magazine, um, we you can um, purchase it in digital for your iPhone or your Android, um, for your tablet, or you can order a print from magcloud.com, uh, print on demand. Um, they also provide um, um, the, the versions in the PDF and also the web viewer through magcloud. So um, that's also available today. Yay. I like that. And um, there was something else I was going to tell you guys. Now, what was that? Hmm. Leslie Serenisi, <laughs> got to say her name right. Um, you know, she's coming to Wisconsin to Star Nations Academy here um, the weekend of April 27th, teaching um, animal communication level one class. And um, she's also doing um, private readings as well. So if you're in the area and you have a pet issue that you'd like to have some help with, um, you can contact us at um, our website through the contact. Um, you'll be contacting me, basically. Um, or Julie, uh, Julie Shumway Hill, who is our, our uh, academy manager. And uh, we'll be setting up um, those private readings for Leslie. And so if you, if you have a pet issue and you'd like to have some help with it, um, Leslie will be available on Saturday morning, I think it is, and Saturday night, and probably Sunday morning. I'm not sure when her flight is going, is leaving on Sunday, but possibly Sunday morning as well. So there you go. All right. So enjoy the rest of your Wednesday, and we'll see you back here tomorrow at 3 p.m. Um, Eastern time. Don't forget, 
Ed's show is following ours at 4 p.m. tonight or on Thursday. Okay. All right. So, Bama Mina, that means in Potawatomi until we see each other again. Love you guys.